Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Ben Fletcher and this is the Beholders Chat. It is our very first episode of the Beholders Chat and I welcome you to join us for a very wonderful conversation and a very wonderful moment where we'll discuss the Word of God and we'll have some time to know and to get deeper into the Word of God because that is what you've been called into. For all believers, it is of necessity to grow in the Word of God. We realize that when Paul, the Apostle Paul, was given a chance to pray for the church, he didn't pray that they may have big cars, he didn't pray that they may have big houses, he didn't pray that they may have great names or they may be established in so many businesses and wealth and all that and riches of this world. But when he had the opportunity to pray for the church, and the church means you and I, he didn't pray for all those things. He prayed for one thing, that they may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And that is the prayer that we pray for ourselves, for the church every day, that even as we desire to have everything else, we may be filled with the knowledge of His will. And how does that happen? That happens by the Spirit through the Word. Hallelujah. So thank you. I believe we'll have a wonderful moment here and you will enjoy this wonderful show. So Ben Fetcher is my name and Together with me, I have on my left side, I have uh, our good brother, Bonnie Glorious, the glory. Yes. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm very fine. Okay. So blessed to be among the, the beholders chat. Awesome. <laughs> and I'm so, so blessed. Yes. And it is going to be so awesome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Then on my right side, I have IKR. Ian Kamande <laughs> Royalty. <laughs> you know, those are my initials for my real names. <laughs> Ian Kamande Rogomi. Oh, some. It's IKR. <laughs> but I am royalty because God is my father and I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Yes. Thank you very much. So, and uh, today we're having a very interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love the conversation that we're having today. Me too. <laughs> we've been talking about uh, when Jesus came here on earth. Did he come to start another religion or did he come to do, what did he come to do? What was the reason of Jesus coming to here on earth? Mm -hmm. Was he the source of the religions or did he fight religions already here? And I want us to start uh, to open this conversation mm -hmm. with the reading from the book of John chapter 10. John chapter 10. And uh, this is one of the verses that I truly love. It is in John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. And the Bible says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Now, Jesus says, But I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So, I believe with the coming of Jesus, he came to do, uh, to do one thing. He came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So, our topic of discussion today is that Christianity is not a religion. And I know we've started with that, with that verse. <laughs> the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So with that verse, what do you see? With verse, with John chapter 10, verse 10. Yes. <laughs> so Christ comes and gives us the purpose of his coming. Mm -hmm. He's telling us, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So it's like he's telling us, anything that came before me <laughs> did not give you life. Mm -hmm. Anything that came before me stole from you. In fact, when you look at John chapter 10 as a whole. Yeah, the you, context. Yeah, when you read the context of John chapter 10, you realize there's a place Christ says, anyone that came before me, those were thieves. Mm -hmm. I think it's John chapter 10 verse 6. It yeah. says, those were thieves mm -hmm. and murderers. Yes. And he says, but I am come now that you may have life and have it more abundantly 
So press did not come to to okay, you realize the the context of John chapter 10 gives us the purpose of religion. Mm -hmm. Because he says all those that came before me, you realize that all religions in the world okay, not all of them but before Christ came there were religions. In fact, the the, the Jews had a religion called Judaism. Mm. And uh, that is what Christ was born into. And then Christ says that that which came before me came to steal from me, came to kill you. Yeah. But I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. So if this came to kill you and I have come to give you life, and yet this other one is a religion, how can what Christ came to start also be a religion? Mm -hmm. I believe Christ did not come to start a religion. Okay. And it's a wonderful conversation. <laughs> wow. Yes. Wow, wow. That's that's awesome. I want you just to I wanted us just to look at that verse, John chapter ten, verse ten. I think this is the the greatest de declaration of Jesus that this is the reason I came. Mm -hmm. What do you what, what do you see in that verse, John chapter ten, verse ten? Uh, maybe to introduce also, okay, not to introduce, but to set the basic on what we've just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, the the main focus of Jesus was to come. Jesus is the express image of the invisible God. Mm -hmm. So God in his fullness, when he sends somebody from him, he has sent him here on the earth. Yes. The thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But the coming of Jesus was to give life. Before that, or rather, maybe to, to call the word religion, religion is the, the, the uses, the acts that look ceremonially, like they are worship, like they are something sort of worship, mm -hmm. but not necessarily with the confirmation of the one that is referred or preferred without his mind or without his contribution in the same. But now, when Jesus is ministering this, he says that me, the reason why I came is that men may have life and have it more abundant. So it was necessarily to introduce something from the creator himself or to introduce his opinion and also his knowledge to them. Because beyond doubt, uh, from the conversation which we are headed to, it's that religion is where men try to seek after God mm -hmm. and to understand him and to know him. But his coming, it's that he may introduce himself to men. So even from the word go, it is that in Christ, Christianity is beyond you seeking to know me and to find me. Mm -hmm. Christianity is more of me coming to seek you that I may establish it to you. Yeah. Wow, awesome. Yeah. Uh, though you've gone way ahead <laughs> of our <laughs> conversation. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes, uh, because I wanted us to first look at that verse uh -huh. where now Jesus is giving a declaration in it. It's like, for me, this one is one of the, the major statements that Jesus made. Yeah. That the thief cometh not but to steal, mm -hmm. to kill, and yeah. to destroy. Yeah. But I am come mm -hmm. that you may have life and have it in abundance. Yeah. So the question is, does it mean that these guys didn't have life? Or what is Jesus talking about here? Mm -hmm. Even before we go into defining what religion and what Christianity is, yeah. what is Jesus saying here? Does it mean that... Uh, before he came, there was no life. Mm -hmm. Okay, according to the definition of life mm -hmm. that Christ himself gave, when you look at John chapter 17, verse 3, and he says, and this is eternal life, mm -hmm. which is actually the life that he is talking about uh, in John chapter 10, verse 10. Yeah. The, the, the definition, the, the, tra the translation of the word zoe, mm -hmm. Is the same word in John chapter 10 verse 10 and John chapter 17 verse 3. Yeah. Eternal life and life in John chapter 10 verse 10. Yes. Jesus says, and this is eternal life. So this is the life that Christ is speaking from John chapter 10 verse 10. That they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Mm -hmm. So according to what Christ is saying, he's saying before I came, these people did not know God. Mm-hmm. So I, I believe that is the life Christ is talking about, okay. a life of knowing God. Mm -hmm. And I believe the knowing here is more is intimacy. It is knowing God intimately. Yeah. Actually, I was looking at that word, yes. know, that yes. word, yes. the same word in John 17, verse 3. Mm -hmm. It's also the same word that is used in Genesis chapter 4. Yes. If you go to Genesis chapter 4, uh, Genesis chapter 4. Verse, I think verse one. Mm. He says, and and Adam knew Eve his wife, and yeah. she conceived. 
the original word that is used there mm. it has carries the same meaning with the word know that is used in Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. Wow. And now he says, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, mm. and she conceived. Wow. So the same word which he says, and mm -hmm. this is eternal life, that mm. they may know God. Yes. So the same know here is the same used in, in Genesis. Genesis. Mm -hmm. And now this knowledge in mm. Genesis is talking about intimacy. Yes. Where a man comes mm. together, with, comes in union with the, his wife, yes. and the wife conceives. Yes. So it's like that is the kind of knowledge that he's talking about. Yes. It's a fellowship. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Christ is, is saying, before I came, you people did not know God intimately. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So what was there before he came? Mm -hmm. If they didn't know God, uh -huh. what was there? Uh, maybe what, were they, what were they doing? <laughs> uh, sort of. Okay, maybe from, the, from what was happening at that time, mm -hmm. it was just a, an act of worship which had the it had the the picture of worship but it did not have the actual life in it mm -hmm. it was a an a tradition sort of we can say it was sort of a tradition because in many instances jesus used to speak about it you people you you are you are bringing down the power of the word of God because of your tradition mm -hmm. so it was sort of a tradition yes maybe once God appeared in it as we can say God appeared once in it but now because of way of use it was not really the, it was not the real life at that time okay yeah so can we call that religion absolutely so <laughs> now we have right, arrived at the word religion <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think how can you define religion what is religion 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 in the most simple words mm -hmm. it is it is a it is an external which consists something that looks like a way of worship mm -hmm. but in itself it does not carry the the actual reality about worshiping or the mind of god in worshiping yeah yes we can say yeah we can say it's something that happens as a culture we do it as a culture we do it as a tradition it has been there maybe once it worked or maybe even it had some things in them but in real sense it is not in them that the actual real thing is like one one instance when Paul went to a place called Athens, mm -hmm. in Athens, there were, there were many, many places of worship. There were many altars. In fact, there was one that took his attention mm -hmm. that was written uh, <laughs> to the unknown, the unknown God. God. That yeah. is in the book of Acts. Yes, yes. in the, the book unknown of God. Yeah, yeah, Acts chapter 17. Mm -hmm. So it was to the unknown God. They were worshiping a God who they did not know. Yes. And from that point, Paul introduced the life of Christ to them okay. because it was unknown. They were worshipping, yes, but in reality, there was no knowing. The knowledge you've just said that Adam knew his wife Eve. Mm -hmm. The one also that when Christ came, he introduced us to knowing God in that reality. Okay. Yeah, so there was no that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Religion. I believe religion is man's ideas mm -hmm. about God without the confirmation of God. Okay. Yeah. It is man trying to figure out who God is without God telling him who, who he is. Wow. Yes. It's man trying to figure out who yes. God is. Yes. Without depending on God yes. to tell him yes. who he really to is. To reveal himself mm. to that man. And uh, as you've seen in John chapter 10 verse 10. Yes. Uh, it's like uh, when now Jesus comes, yeah. he's the one now coming to 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 give the to give them the direction yeah. and tell them mm -hmm. this is what has been happening mm -hmm. there is a thief who came yes and he stole from you mm -hmm. yeah it's like you've been robbed yes. guys you've been robbed <laughs> yeah. yeah but now i am here mm -hmm. to to set things in order mm -hmm. and how does he set things in order he says i am come mm -hmm. that you may have life mm -hmm. and have it more abundantly yeah so now coming to religion mm -hmm. uh borrowing from your words yeah and borrowing from Ian's words. Yeah. It's like religion mm -hmm. is a man's way yeah. of reaching God. Yes. Absolutely. Just summarizing what you've said yes. and what you are saying. Yes. It's man coming up and crafting up ways mm -hmm. on how to reach God. Yes. Yeah. So, like what ways or what things have men created and crafted in uh, in the in the in the urge to try to reach God because you said mm -hmm. that uh, before Christ came yeah. there were some people who were there yeah. and there was a form of worship that yeah. was happening yeah. 
because with God, when we're talking about God, we're talking mm-hmm. about worship. Yeah. So there was a form of worship mm-hmm. that was happening, mm-hmm. but it didn't have the real thing, mm-hmm. which is the life of God. Yes. yes. So, uh, what are some of the things that that made this uh, this kind of life mm-hmm. not to be the real life? Okay. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, the thing that made it to be outside the reality, it was because it did not have the mind of God in it. Mm-hmm. It did not have God's power inside of it. Because in reality, even from the beginning, when God was creating man, the beginning of it all was not for man to ever try to appease or to reach out to God. Mm-hmm. The beginning of God was God reaching out to man. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like the analogy in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1, it was to the end that God may reach out to men. Mm -hmm. But the fall of man, the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3, it led men to running away from God. Uh, Just a minute. Okay. You say it, uh, Mm -hmm. the the original plan of God was not that man may try to reach him, but God reaching out to man. Absolutely. Expound on that. (laughs) Okay, to expound on that, Mm -hmm. uh, before our coming, before we landed in the scene, before man even realized who he was, before we even knew who we were or we were supposed to be, mm-hmm. we were before we came to the scene, God had us in his mind. It was not for man to reach out to God. I mean, what I mean by that is this. In Genesis chapter 1, when the Bible says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form, and it was void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Mm -hmm. Then now, from that point, God comes and creates light. That means the world independent from God, it had nothing. Yes. It was void and it was formless. But then when God introduced... I love the word you like using. Which one? Use it. Which one? Uh, the other was, was nothing. <laughs> it was nothing, nothing. In the, in the Hebrew, they say it's toho bohu. You know toho boho? Yeah. Toho. Toho. <laughs> toho. <laughs> toho. <laughs> yeah. It mm-hmm. had nothing. Yeah. It did not have the ability to do anything. Mm-hmm. In fact, in its own self, it had nothing to do. And God knew about it. That's why he could not command, he could not create anything before he created light. Mm-hmm. And light in Genesis 1-3, it was God's ability that influenced the earth mm-hmm. so that the earth may be able to respond to God. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So when God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, it will now bring forth vegetation. Mm-hmm. Because the earth... Or even men, the earth is just a metaphor of men. Mm. In its own self, it had no ability to do anything. But when God introduced the light, the Bible says that all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that has been made. Then he says, in him was life Mm. and that life was the light of men. So the light there was in fact the light of men, which enlightened men to realize what ability that God had created and pushed inside of them so that they may please God. Okay. So that is what I mean when I'm saying that it is it, we are, God from the beginning created us to live fully functional by his own ability, mm-hmm. which he provides for us. Okay. So even in worship, it was not more about man to God. Yes. It was God who created man that men may realize what he, he may give them ability to relate with him and even worship him. Wow. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. So, so when... It, is, it begins with God. Yeah. And because it begins with God, yeah. uh, then man responds to God. Yes. And now you, you've called it a relationship. Yeah. So it's not... So religion is yeah. when man is trying to reach to God. Absolutely. But Christianity yeah. is a relationship because yeah. it is God yeah. reaching out to man. Absolutely. Uh-huh. What do you say? You know, going back to where Bonnie was, it is not about... It's not about what man is doing for God, mm. but what God is doing for man. Mm. You see, you realize uh, the first form of religion, <laughs> we see it in the book of Genesis. Mm-hmm. After the fall of knowledge, yes. man fell in, in the realm of knowledge. When he fell, when he ate the, the fruit mm-hmm. of, of, of the knowledge of good and evil, man fell from the knowledge of God, from the knowledge of life mm-hmm. to the knowledge of good and evil yeah. and his first reaction mm. after falling mm-hmm. was him trying to do do something 
to make himself acceptable mm -hmm. before God. Yeah. Wow. God comes to the garden mm -hmm. and asks Adam, where are you? Mm -hmm. And Adam says, I have hid myself because I realized I am naked. Mm -hmm. And what had Adam done? Yeah. They, had, they had gone, taken leaves yeah. of the figs mm -hmm. and covered themselves. Yeah. And you realize mm -hmm. God does not like religion mm. because the first thing he does mm -hmm. he first uncovers them with those leaves and performs his own work wow he takes a lamp and uh takes the the outer skin and covers them with it replacing that which man had done with his own works mm -hmm. so any form of religion any form of any form of uh, man mm -hmm. trying to do something to in order God. to appease God mm -hmm. or to please God is what we are calling religion. Mm -hmm. And God is not for religion. Mm -hmm. He disqualifies it and puts on his own work. Mm -hmm. Yes. So anything that man tries to do yes. to appease God yes. is a form of religion. Yes. So that is the definition of religion. Yes. Therefore, if that is the case, then religion starts all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Yes. Where we see that two trees mm. the bible talks about two trees that mm. were in the middle of the garden yes yeah. the first one mm -hmm. was the tree of life mm. yes it was in the middle of the garden yeah. read your bible yeah. the second one was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil yeah in the knowledge of good and evil mm -hmm. the response of man to the knowledge of good and evil is what you do yeah. right yeah. is your work yes that is religion yes mm. actually that is why because they ate from the from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, yeah. they realized that they were not okay before God. Mm. Absolutely. So, so what we see there <laughs> is that the first thing that religion does mm. is to show you your unworthiness. Yes. Uh, I think that is the first fruit. Yeah. Disqualifies you. It is, the first thing it does, <laughs> yeah. it is to disqualify you. Yes. Yeah. So that, because religion wants you to work for something yes so the first thing it has to do mm -hmm. is to disqualify you yeah. so that you can see mm -hmm. i need to do something yes. absolutely Be by the way they had a choice mm -hmm. in the garden of eden yeah. they could have chosen to eat from the tree of life tree of life yes mm -hmm. and actually they were told not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil yeah. only only yes. yes so they had a choice to eat from the tree of life yes, yes. and what would have would have happened to them mm -hmm. if they had eaten the tree of life from the tree of life from the tree of life Th that means they were eating from the tree of life mm -hmm. so what will have happened it's the continual of the same same fellowship yes. which they were having with god yes. they will have remained mm -hmm. in that continual. place of fellowship yes. yeah because when, when, when now when paul is defining what really happened he says in the book of romans chapter 3 that for all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god yes, yes. the falling from the glory came because of eating something else that is not in relation to what God had provided for mm -hmm. man. Okay? Yeah. Because any anyway, religion is when man comes in with his own efforts or with his own things according to his sight outside what God has already provided. Yes. Yes. So that is what made them to fall. So if that was the case, there, there will be no fall. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Christ has come and he has given us that life. And mm -hmm. so in continual fellowship with that, mm -hmm. we remain in the place of glory. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Mm, awesome. So they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. And uh, what we see is that they fell short of the glory of God. Mm. Yeah. The glory of God is the life of God. Yes. Yeah. And now this is what we see Christ coming and saying, mm -hmm. I am come yeah. that I may that I might give you life. life. So yes. it's like he's saying, mm -hmm. what was lost mm -hmm. because of religion, uh -huh. now I have come to give it to you yes. and give it in abundance. Yes. Because what they got, what mm -hmm. they when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, yeah. the response uh -huh. to that yeah. was to try to look for ways, just mm -hmm. like you said, yes. Yes. to look for ways mm -hmm. to cover their nakedness. Yes. Because religion mm -hmm. will always show you yeah. your nakedness. Yes. Yes. It might not necessarily be the physical nakedness, yes. but your nakedness, that is your, your, your shortcomings, yes. your mistakes and all that. Yeah. But now the tree of life was meant to give them life. Yeah. But now when Christ comes, uh -huh. now he comes as the tree of life. Yeah. And he says, I am here yeah. that you may have life Praise and have God. it abundantly. Absolutely. So does it mean that throughout the, throughout the Bible, mm -hmm. we can see the manifestation of religion, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, from from Genesis to to actually actually to, to the time Christ dies, yeah. uh, we see we see the we see the we see the we see what man tries to do in order to 
please God mm-hmm. or to put himself right with God. Mm-hmm. And when God realized, by the way, when God realized that man is trying to please him, he gave the law mm-hmm. to show man that How there is, is nothing possible? you can do yeah. to come back to the level mm-hmm. where I am, to come back into fellowship yeah. with me mm-hmm. without without me initiating you, yeah, yeah. it or helping you mm-hmm. to, to come back to where I am. Yeah. And then he gives the law. Mm. But the law was not to bring men back into fellowship with God. Yeah. It was to show men how impossible it is. It's like you've chosen this direction. Yes. Okay, let's go. Let's Take go. the law. Are exactly. you going to keep it? <laughs> <laughs> no, we are not. <laughs> because the Bible says God is a gentle spirit. Yeah. He will look at what you want mm-hmm. and if if and he will show you if it is good for you mm-hmm. or not mm-hmm. so he gave the law to show them that it is actually impossible yeah. for you to do anything yeah without my involvement mm-hmm. to come back to the glory that you lost wow yes so the the law was given because man chose the way mm-hmm. of religion yes so the law was given mm-hmm. because man decided i can do it my way yes uh so in the in the in the process of trying to to have a relationship with God, yes. yeah. the law was added. I like I love the Bible. The Bible says that the law was not the original plan. Yes. Yes. It was an addendum. Yes. Wow. Wow. That is me that is to say that it was added. Yes. Yes. But it was not added to help man mm-hmm. to enjoy the fellowship he had with God. Yes. Yeah. It was added to show man mm-hmm. that what you lack mm-hmm. is fellowship with me mm-hmm. and by yourself yeah. you cannot Yes. You cannot get to my place. Yeah. So the law comes and tells you what not to do. Mm-hmm. Then does, it doesn't help you from yeah. there. It just leaves you there. Yeah. But now the only way to respond to it is by works. Mm-hmm. Yes. And your works can never be enough. Yeah. And that is how now religion is. Absolutely. And I also see like uh, in, all the, in, all this, in the entire Bible from Genesis, mm-hmm. we see religion and uh, Christianity mm-hmm. Okay, we'll talk about Christianity in a very short while after the break. Yeah. We see it being represented all through. Yeah. And actually, it's not Christianity. Mm. It is the life. The yeah. life. Yes. The life. Yes. yes. Christianity is our nickname. Yeah. Yeah. Christian, we were, we were given a nickname called Christian. <laughs> yes. But our original name is the, the people of the way, the people of life. Yes. yes. The people of life. Yes. So we see both being represented through all through the Bible. Like yes. in the story of... Abraham, mm. he gets two sons. Mm. Then God, uh, he gets two sons. One, as a result of the flesh, mm. that is a representation of religion, yeah. works. Yeah. Then the other one is a son of promise. Yeah. We see, we see who, we see Isaac getting two sons, yeah. Jacob and Esau, yeah. a representation of works, yeah, and a yeah. representation of of uh, Christianity or the life. Yeah. Yes. But I want us to go for a short break, mm-hmm. and then we'll be right back after this. Absolutely. Welcome back to the Beholders Chat. And yes, it is wonderful. We are talking about Christianity and religion. We've taken some time to talk about religion and we've said, we've established that religion is man trying to reach to God. Yes. And man has crafted so, so many ways to try to reach to God. Mm. Sometimes, sometimes even prayers can be religious. Yeah. Giving can be religious, yeah. right? Yeah. Any, anything you are doing, mm. I like something you say that anything you are doing to try to appease God yes. is a form of religion. Yes. And that is not the original plan of God. Mm. God is not, by the way, God is not a religious God. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I, I went somewhere and said <laughs> that God is not even a Christian. Yeah. People are like, you mean God is not a Christian? <laughs> yes. yes, he's not. Yeah. And, he did, and Jesus did not come to die for Christians. Yes. Yes. He came to die for the world. Wow. Yes. Praise and God. Uh, as uh, we were finishing the first part, we said that mm. Uh, Christ, the, the name Christian mm-hmm. was given as a nickname yes. in the book of Acts chapter 11. Maybe I can read that. Yes. It is not the, our original name. Mm-hmm. Acts chapter 11 verse 25. Yeah. I just want to read that verse. Okay. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, let me, let me open the verse. Okay. It's in Acts 11 verse 25 and 26. Mm-hmm. So Christian is not our real name. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. I'm reading from the King James Version. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church 
and taught much people and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Mm. So that is the first place where they were called Christians. Yes. And at this time, Jesus had died. Yeah. He had risen from the dead. Yes. He had ascended. Mm. So he did not start Christianity. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. I love that. Christ did not start Christianity. Wow. Yes. <laughs> because as long as people think about Christianity as as the the thing that Christ came to start, yeah. it will always be a religion in their mind. Yes. Yeah, sure. Because where there is a religion, mm -hmm. there is a religious leader. Yeah. Yes. Sure. But is Jesus a religious leader? No, he's not a religious leader. In fact, uh, I want you to think of, uh, of this thought, yeah? Mm -hmm. No one, for example, let's, let me say I, I have a company mm -hmm. and I start the company and I give it a name myself, yeah. okay? And uh, somebody else, somebody else wants to give my company a name that I have already given. Mm -hmm. You see, we shall confuse each other because I am the one who knows why I started this company. Yes. I am the one who knows the definition of the company and the purpose of the company that I mm -hmm. have started. Yes. So it is impossible for someone else to it is impossible for someone else to catch the whole the totality of the purpose and the mind behind why I started a certain company and give it a name. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I am the only one who started that company mm -hmm. who knows the mind and the purpose and the reason why I started this company and why I'm giving it the name that mm -hmm. I am giving it. Yeah, sure. So uh, someone who has not caught the reason or the revelation of Christ coming to earth cannot, cannot define the work of Christ. Mm -hmm. They cannot define the work of Christ. Wow. Yes. And it is interesting that the people who are defining or who are giving a name to yes. the believers yes. Yes. is not the, the, the people who are inside the exactly the gospel exactly. it's the outsiders mm. yes so the the, the name christians mm -hmm. was given by outsiders yeah <laughs> i think we should look for our own name <laughs> <laughs> but there is a reason why yes. they, they called them christians yes because the bible tells us that mm -hmm. they were taught yeah they were taught mm -hmm. and ultimately they looked like christ yes, yes. and they were called christians, christians. Wow. Yes. by outsiders praise the lord so what we realize here is that uh, Jesus is not the originator of Christianity. Mm -hmm. He is not. Yeah. And we go back to our verse, John chapter 10, verse 10. Yeah. It says, mm -hmm. he came to give life. life. Yeah. Yes. He came to give life. Yeah. So if we miss the big picture mm -hmm. of the one who came up with this, uh, this faith, yes. which is Christ, mm -hmm. yes. if we miss the big picture, yeah. we miss the whole thing. Absolutely. And I can tell for generations, mm -hmm. the big picture has been lost. Yeah. Yes. Because people think like it's, another religion mm -hmm. which has its sets or sects of uh, religious activities to be fulfilled. Yeah. So now talking about life, this is why now, where now I love it mm -hmm. because <laughs> it's not about man yeah. reaching to God. Yeah. It's about God coming to man. Yeah. So this life, mm -hmm. born glorious, yes, sir. this life that Christ brought mm -hmm. and discussing religion yeah. and life, yeah. what do you say? Mm. Praise the Lord again. Mm. <laughs> yes, praise. Yes, praise. I'm being religious. Anyway, so <laughs> uh, maybe this is what I can on on the same same subject of life. Uh, there's a time Jesus Himself He said that the things that I've taught you, I am going to ascend. And for right now, because there is no helper inside of you, maybe you cannot understand whatever I'm speaking to you mm -hmm. in an open way or in an open bracket. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that the helper came, he came through the apostles and he entered the apostles. And that is when the, the Holy Spirit was seen, manifested in this world. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. And so the coming of Jesus, rather, uh, one of the reasons why we love teaching from Paul and John and James and all the epistles, mm -hmm. it's because that is when now Christ himself, as he had prophesied uh, or he had, uh, as he had promised, that at that time they would not be able to understand mm -hmm. what he was teaching them because of the nature they had. Sure. But now he said, I will send you a helper who will come and he will teach you and remind you all the things that I've taught you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in the coming, uh, I was doing a good study in the place where Paul is speaking in the book of Acts mm -hmm. when he went to Athens. I, I, I loved that conversation because it's, he came to a setup that was totally religious. Mm -hmm. 
it was so religious. Mm. They had many altars. The yes. Bible says that I have seen that in all ways, you are all rounds, you are superstitious. Mm-hmm. That means you you are religious. Mm. You guys, you are religious. I've seen many altars among you. I've even seen an altar which is described or prescribed to the unknown God. Yes. And now to the unknown God, I have come to reveal him to you. <laughs> and when he's speaking about the unknown God, he introduces to them that, in fact, when, when he came, he created all things including the world and even us we who are here we were all created by the lord of heaven Mm -hmm. and he says he dwells not in temples built with human hands praise the lord Mm -hmm. that is to show it is not by the efforts that you do that will make him or to come and dwell in you and he says neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything seeing he gives to all life number one life Mm -hmm. and breath Mm -hmm. and then all things and then he says and has appointed of one blood all the nations of men Men for to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined the bounds and times before time for their habitation. But then the end of this is that verse 27 that they should seek the Lord mm-hmm. if haply they might feel after him yes. and find him, mm-hmm. though he be not far from every one of us. Mm-hmm. Then he says, For in him. Now, he brings us to the place of life. Mm. The place of life does not end with ourselves. Mm. Religion ends us with ourselves. Mm. It brings us to the point where we try to struggle everything so as to understand and please God. Mm. But when it comes to life, he says that he he did this so that for in him, he might bring us to himself. And in him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. Mm -hmm. And as certain of your poets have said, for we are his offspring. So he has adapted us to himself. He has made us his own sons. He has given us his life inside of us. And by that life, now we are able to to do whatever things he has predestined us to do because he has given us his own ability inside of us. And Zoe ends with God's life being inside of us. Praise God. Amen. So this is an introduction of a relationship. Yes. It's not a sect of rules to be kept. Yes. It's a relationship to be enjoyed. Yeah. And I can tell like... Uh, uh, in our family setup, yeah. uh, my father is not a religious leader of the family. <laughs> <laughs> he is our father. Uh, so we don't relate with him as, as, a, as a religion. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. When you were born into your family, mm-hmm. were you born into a religion? No, I was born into a family. <laughs> exactly. So even Christianity, yes. when we talk about our faith, yes. we, are not, we, we, we don't join yes. a religion called Christianity. Exactly. Yeah. We are born into, into the family wow. of God. Yes. Yes. And now you talk about life. Mm. And this life now is where now this same life that God has, yeah. He gives it to the sons, yeah. yes. because the sons only carry mm-hmm. the life of their father. Absolutely. And now God being our father, yeah. we are not just uh, there to to be religiously there mm-hmm. or to fulfill a, a certain religious du- duty, yeah. but we are there to enjoy our, our relationship. Amen. And so this life is all about an intimate relationship. Yeah. That we are not trying to and anything from God, yeah. but we are enjoying what he has already done. Yes. He, is the, he is the Alpha, uh-huh. I like that, yeah. he is the Alpha yeah. and the Omega. Mm. So it is not us who come in and bring in our, our, our stories mm. yes. or to participate in our own thinking and our own plans. Yeah. It is God who started it mm-hmm. and he is faithful to the end yeah. because now he has brought us into himself. Yeah. And what we are enjoying now yeah. is, a, is a relationship. Absolutely. Yes. yes. If I if I may take you back a little bit, yeah. yeah. One of the definitions of uh, of religion mm-hmm. is belief in or worship of a superhuman mm-hmm. or controlling power, mm-hmm. especially a personal god or gods. That that is one of the definition of religion. That is how the world defines religion. So from that from that one, I you capture the word believing, and uh, some people may say. If you believe in God, then you are religious. Mm-hmm. Because according to the world, believing in God or a superhuman being is actually religion. But you realize Christianity is more than believing in God. Yeah. In fact, let me make a statement. You do not become a Christian because you believe in God. Mm-hmm. John, uh, James chapter 2, verse 9, it yes. says, You believe that there is one God, and you do well. Even the demons believe. <laughs> and they are not Christians. <laughs> and they tremble. The demons believe. Yeah. Do they become Christians because they believe there is a God? Mm-mm. No. So believing in God does not really make you a Christian. Yeah. Christianity is more than believing. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. you become a Christian mm-hmm. by first believing in God. Yeah. You cannot become a Christian without believing. Yeah. But it does not end with believing. Yeah. And that is why Christ says, mm-hmm. 
I have come that you may have life yeah. and have it in abundance. Mm -hmm. And this is life. Mm -hmm. And now this is the life I'm talking about. This yeah. is the eternal life I'm talking it about. Know. That you may know. Mm -hmm. And we saw that it is an intimacy. It is a relationship. It is a, it is a, it is a fellowship of knowledge. You know God as he is. Mm -hmm. And uh, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. Yes. So it's it's a it's a knowledge. It's an it's an it's a it's a it's a it's an intimate that relationship intimate relationship that leads to you knowing God as He is, mm. as He is. Praise God. Amen. There's something you had said earlier yeah? yeah. that uh, religion uh, is where man in his mind, yes, what the perspective that he sees God, yes. how he sees God, mm. and uh, the the. The kind of a God that is created in his own mindset. Yes. But now there is what man thinks about God, yeah. and there is what God is. Yes. And what he says about himself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So our our faith, now the Christian faith, settles not in what we think about God, yes. but settles in who God yes. is and what he has said about himself. Yeah. And he has uh, he has okay, uh, he has a uh, Revealed to him uh, himself to us as a father. Yes, yeah. praise God. Amen. Now, uh, I overheard a, a preacher saying mm -hmm. that Christianity is not a religion. Mm -hmm. Christianity is divinity mm -hmm. alive in humanity. Wow! So Christianity is a union of divinity and humanity. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Uh oh. The union, the, yeah. the coming together mm -hmm. of humanity yeah. and divinity. What is divinity? Divinity is it's, it's, it's the God life. Yeah. Humanity is now the human being. Yes. Yeah. So the seriousness of our faith mm -hmm. is in this. Yeah. It's not just a, a, a form of activities and uh, rules or things that we do to become anything. Yeah. It's about God yeah. indwelling a man. Yes. Wow. And I think that is the, the greatest thing that believers, even believers who call yeah. themselves Christians, mm. should know. Yes. It is not because you go to church, it's not yes. because you give an offering, it's mm. not because you, you, you meet with a certain man of God. Yeah. It is because you have been given the very life of God. Yes. And actually, uh, the union of God and man yeah. results to sons of God. Mm. Sure. Very true. Sure. Results to sons of God. Yeah. Uh, I've heard other people of other religions say mm -hmm. that is there any day that God gave birth to to a man? Yeah. Does God have does God have the ability to give birth? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think it is good to set this clear yeah. that what we call sons of God or yeah. son of God yeah. is the union yeah. of God mm -hmm. and man. Yes. Yeah. When God and man becomes one, yeah. the product is called son of God. Absolutely. Yes. It's not that he gave birth, yeah. like, you know, sometimes we want to figure out God with our own things and thinkings and uh, reasoning. Yeah. So it is, the, you know, when, the reason why Jesus is called the son of God mm -hmm. is because he was 100% God yes. and he was 100% man. man. Yes. Yeah. So that is why he became a son of God. Yes. Yeah. And now this is our, our faith. Yes. It's when 100% God comes into union with 100% man, man yes. and becomes Son of God. Yes. Wow. So, what is this? What is the Son of God? <laughs> As you said, it's it's actually divinity living in humanity, and the perfect actually actually the how we know that God lives in us. The Bible tells us that we are sure that God lives in us by His Spirit. Yes. If the same Spirit of God lives in you, that 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 shows you that God Himself is living in you mm -hmm. because. The spirit of God is not uh, is not is not a junior God. It's mm -hmm. actually God in His wholeness. <laughs> that reminds me of something. Someone was told to to draw God a father. He drew old, an, an old muse with beards, white beards, with white beards. Yes. Then he was told to draw Jesus. He drew a younger, a, kijana. a younger kijana, a man <laughs> with at least black beards. Yes. Then he was told to draw the Holy Spirit. He was not able to draw. The others drew a dove. Yes. Others drew a dove, <laughs> and he was he was asked. Yeah. Who told you that God is an old muse? Yeah. Who told you that Jesus is a young man? Yeah. And why were you not able to draw the Holy Spirit? Yes. 
He said the Holy Spirit is a spirit. Yes. Then he was told God is a spirit. <laughs> yeah. You cannot give him a physical image. As physical image. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So it is. The, it it's is not that, a junior God. <laughs> it's not a junior God. <laughs> it's actually the totality. Wow. The fullness of God living in a man. Praise God. And Christianity. If I if I could define Christianity according to what we have extracted here. Yeah. Christianity is the experience yeah. of the life of God mm-hmm. in a man. Here on earth. Here on earth. Praise God. Yes. Yes. Christianity is mm-hmm. the experience yes. of the life of God yes. in a man. Yes. This is what makes all the difference. Yes. Wow. So when you see Christians, mm-hmm. if you are a believer, yeah. you don't consider yourself as a religious person. Yeah. No, you're not a religious person. Yeah. You carry God inside you. Wow, yes. praise God. When you understand what Christianity is all about, mm-hmm. it's more than just going to church, yeah. clapping your hands, mm-hmm. lifting up your hands, yeah. and uh, bowing na- bowing down and praise giving God. offerings. That yeah. is that that is something that every other religion does. Yes. But for us, yeah. the difference between us mm-hmm. and all the other religions in this world yeah. is that you have God mm-hmm. living in us. Yes. It is only in Christianity yeah. where the worshipped yeah. lives yes. in, in the, the worshiper. worshiper. Wow. Yes. Praise God. But <laughs> every, uh, everywhere else, yeah. the one who is worshipped is a supreme being out yeah. there yeah. and he is feared. Oh, but for us, we have him inside us. Absolutely. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't it amazing? It's it amazing. is so amazing. It is amazing that we have God of yeah. the universe yes. living inside us. Yes. And what does this make us to be? Wow. Born glorious. <laughs> I know, I know our time is almost up. Now, when Please people understand Lord. Christianity, yes, I know you know people threaten Christianity and yeah. they say things uh, about Christians. Yeah, but when Christians really understand who they are, yes. what, what does that make us to be? My goodness, that that is so big, sir. It is so so big. Praise the Lord. I, I, and allow me, allow me to take it from the Old Testament, yes. because in, even in those days there was a foretest of what should happen yes. hereafter. Yes. Yes. There's a time when Saul was being appointed to be king. Mm-hmm. At that time, there's something Samuel said about Saul. And I will read it from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 10, yes. from verse 6 and 7. Allow me to read it quickly. He says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you shall prophesy with them, and you shall be turned into another man. Then he says, and let it be when these signs are come unto you, that you do as occasion serve you. For God is with you. Wow. For God is with you. <laughs> wow. God himself with you. is with you. Mm-hmm. In the Old Testament, the Spirit of God used to come upon them. Mm-hmm. And only coming upon them will change them to other men. Mm-hmm. I can assure you, try Samson. <laughs> Check Samson's story. <laughs> and you will realize this guy was turned into a, a different man. Yes. He, will, he will pull up gates. Yes. And the Bible says that those people were not perfected without we mm-hmm. who have entered Christ. So when the Spirit of God came and then we were born again, the birth that came inside of us is the nature of God. Mm-hmm. The nature of God in us has changed us into other men. We are a Christian. A Christian is another man. Is another man. <laughs> 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 a Christian yes. is somebody who will do, when these signs are come upon you, you will do as occasion serves you, for God is with you. Wow. That means you will run things. You will decide on what to do on things. Mm-hmm. That is what made Jesus to do whatever he did here on the earth. Yes. He was the first begotten of the Father. Yes. And what he did is extremely amazing. Yes. And to some extent dangerous. He will stop winds. <laughs> My God. Yes, sir. <laughs> the reason he did that is because he was he was God yes. and he was man at the same time. Yes. yes. And a believer is God yeah. and man at, at the, the same, same time. time. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The you Lord. are God and man at the same time. Yeah. What Jesus could do, yeah. he said greater things mm. than this yeah. shall you do. Why? Ah, yeah. Because now we mm-hmm. have God living inside us. Yeah. A believer, a, yeah. a, a Christian, yeah. is not a normal human being. Yeah. He's a supernatural being. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We cannot end this at this time. Yeah. We'll take it up from there in our <laughs> next episode. <laughs> but uh, I want you to give one word as we go. One, one word. One. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, before before we finish, yeah? I, I love what Bon has said. With God. It is man with God because God is with you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then there is this verse that always amazes me he was says with man these things are not possible yeah. but with god yeah. all 
things are possible. Mm -hmm. And now we have, we have established that we are men with God. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that with God, all things. all things are possible. I really wish, I really hope and I believe that Christians will understand who they are. They will understand what they have. Yeah. They will understand who they have in them. Yeah. They will quit being, being, uh, they will quit being uh, people who are beaten. Yeah. Mm. They will, they will quit being uh, men who are victims, mm. and they will be victors each, mm -hmm. in each and every area yeah. of their lives. Amen. Wow. Yes. Yes. One word. <laughs> we'll take it up from here. So just say one word. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Before God asked the earth to produce anything, he created light. Yes. And then the word of God says that he has sent his word over Israel and it has lit over Israel. So he has brought this life and now it's coming to us in form of light. When we receive this knowledge, then we will walk in that truth. It's only a matter of believing. Hallelujah. Wow. It's all a matter of believing. Yeah. Because you are in Christ, yeah. you are as he is. Yes. He says as he is. So are we in this world. Yeah. Not only are you a Christian, yeah. but you are Christ on this world. Yes. And what God can do, yeah. every believer can do. Yes. Because you have the same life mm -hmm. with God mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. This has been uh, the Behold Us chat. And we've enjoyed, I believe we've enjoyed mm -hmm. this wonderful show. My name is Ben Fetcher. I've been with Ian Kamande and uh, Bonnie Glorious. And I believe you are blessed because of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for your life that you've given us. Thank you that we are not just mere normal human beings, but we are supernatural beings. We carry the life of God. And therefore, we manifest the same life wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. amen. Goodbye. See you in our next episode. This is Wema TV and you are blessed. Amen. Amen.